Hello, everyone. Welcome to Avaya's Overcoming Narcissistic Abuse Curriculum. I am Andy Anderson. My partner, Ike Allen, and I are teachers, mentors, and the co-owners of Avaya University. Avaya is the creator of over a thousand books, films, courses, teachings, and other supportive resources. Thank you so much for joining us. Our fellow teacher, Dr. Debbie Silber, is here with us today to talk about the link between narcissists and betrayal. Dr. Silber is the founder of the PBT, Post Betrayal Transformation Institute. She's a holistic psychologist, a health mindset and personal development expert and best-selling author. Her recent PhD study on how we experience betrayal made three groundbreaking discoveries that changes how long it takes people to heal. In addition to being a two-time TEDx speaker, a guest on Fox, CBS, The Dr. Oz Show, and more, she is an award-winning speaker, coach, and author dedicated to helping people move past their betrayals once and for all. And we have also been honored to have Debbie on as a featured teacher on our Breaking Free from Abandonment and Betrayal series, as well as our Overcoming Insecurity and Low Self-Esteem curriculum. So thank you so much for being back with us here today. No, oh, thank you. You just can't get rid of me because I just, <laughs> I love the work you do and I just need an invitation and I'm back. Well, right back at you. See, we just keep, <laughs> we just keep bringing you back. So thank you so much for doing it again. And uh, so let's talk about the link between, you know, you are an expert in this thing called betrayal. And I would imagine people watching right now who are watching or listening because they've had some experience of narcissistic abuse might also have an experience of betrayal or many betrayals. So what's the link between these two things? Uh, you know, and I, first of all, I just want to say I've, I've been there and I understand the pain. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And typically what happens is here we are where we're playing by the rules and it's, it's these spoken or unspoken rules. So like the, this is what we do. This is what we don't do. And we're assuming that the other people, that, that the other person uh, is as well. And then without our awareness or consent, someone decides to put their needs above ours and just completely breaks those rules. And it's such a shock to the body and mind. You know, we're, we're never betrayed by people we don't know. It's by the people we're closest to. And, um, it really creates, uh, of course, there's the beautiful piece of it where everything is completely destroyed, which allows for transformation. So that's the gift right there. But until you get there, whew, it's, it's rough because it just, like I live by a simple rule. If it's going to hurt somebody, don't do it, period. And I assume other people live by that same rule. And I'm constantly reminded that that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> so... Awesome. So what are some symptoms when people experience a betrayal, right? Physical symptoms, mental symptoms, emotional symptoms, what goes along with that? Yeah. Well, actually, you know, when I did that study, we, we made three discoveries and one of them was that there is this collection of symptoms so common to betrayal. It's known as post-betrayal syndrome. I know we'll talk about that later, but some of the most common symptoms, I mean, things like digestive issues, and now, and this is what's so interesting. Think about what the digestive system does. It digests, it absorbs, it processes. Is it any wonder that we're struggling with betrayal because, you know, with our digestive system, because it's hard to digest, absorb, and process, right? So, or things like anxiety, extreme fatigue, really any adrenal issue is going to happen. Now, here's the thing. Then we wind up playing this game of whack-a-mole because all these symptoms are showing up and we're only just doing whatever we can to tamp down the symptoms, seeing the most amazing you know, doctors, coaches, healers, therapists, but at the root of it is this unhealed betrayal. Mm -hmm. So physical symptoms could be digestive issues, extreme fatigue, and I'm talking like any digestive issues. It could be uh, anything adrenal related. Mental, you know, uh, mental symptoms, chaos, complete confusion and chaos. You, uh, your worldview, the world as you've known it, has just been radically destroyed. And it, 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 it absolutely shakes us up. And then emotionally, rage, sadness, you know, depression, you mix all that together. Like, how are you supposed to manage your day? You're still, still supposed to go to work and raise your kids and whatever else you're doing. And here you are navigating uh, something that is. I, I truly believe, and I just, and I talked about that in my, my latest TEDx, do you have post-betrayal syndrome? I don't know um, if there's many more things that are more painful than, I mean, maybe the loss of a child, I imagine, than um, I, think, I think betrayal is one of the most painful of the human experiences. Mm -hmm. So like when you say betrayal and who you work with, um, of course, the first thing that comes to my mind is always like someone's gotten cheated on or something. Mm -hmm. um, but what other kinds of betrayals do you work with? 
There are so many. That's the most common. It is because you're here. We've given our heart, our trust, our loyalty, our devotion, our time. Um, and so that it, it hurts us the most. Family betrayals are huge. And I've had two. So, so my first was my family. The second was my husband. And then, but there are also, you know, friendship betrayals. These just really infuriate us. They don't make any sense. It could be something as simple as your secret safe with me. And then there it is, you know, on Facebook or whatever. It could be a, a coach, a mentor, someone, a psychologist, psychiatrist, someone that you, you, you're, you're going to them and they're, and the, the deal is, the rule is uh, I will guide you appropriately and you're safe. And then they do something harmful or inappropriate. Of course, let's say a, a child completely dependent on their parent and the parent does something awful. You know, that's going to be horrible. But self-betrayal is a big one too, mm. you know, because you could feel like, let's just say you're doing something you know isn't in your best interest. Right. And you just keep doing it. And then that's self-betrayal. But then, you know, this is what I've learned recently. Uh, and I just wrote something about it where we think it's just the big betrayals that impact us, but it's not true. It's the smaller ones as well. It's the ones, you know, there's something called the love versus love becomes hate effect. This, this is, let's say you you buy a product and you think that product is supposed to be good for you and you find out that it isn't. You know, we would, studies have found, we would rather knowingly purchase something we know is bad for us than take the chance and be duped by a company. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It makes me think of, right, like, right, that it's not just the big betrayal. It makes me think of trauma, right? Big T trauma and, mm -hmm. and, and little traumas and all those, those kinds of things mm -hmm. that um, I think a lot of people don't realize affect us in so many ways and we can carry with us. And obviously betrayal is a trauma, right? <laughs> like, And what's so interesting is, you know, in the post-betrayal syndrome assessment, the, it's amazing because there's a, there's a question that reads, is there anything else you'd like to share? I read every single, single one of these. And besides reading about the physical, mental, and emotional, Emotional symptoms. People write things like, my betrayal happened 30 years ago. You know, I can't trust. My betrayal happened 40 years ago. I could still feel the hate. My betrayal happened 15 years ago. Feels like it happened yesterday. So the, the whole idea of time heals all wounds. Oh, no, it doesn't. Not betrayal. Not until we face it, feel it, heal it. So let, I love to talk about trust in a little bit later, but let's mm -hmm. first go through the stages. So the stages of um, betrayal to breakthrough that you talk about. Sure. So that was one of the, the other discoveries was that while we can stay stuck for years, decades, a lifetime, and many of us do, if we're going to heal, we're going to move through five stages. Mm -hmm. And what's even more exciting is now we know what happens physically, mentally, and emotionally at every stage. And we know what it takes to move from one stage to the next. So when this discovery was made, I mean, that was just the most, like in the most nerdy way I, I, I couldn't have gotten more excited about that because now here's this sort of lifeline saying, okay, here's where you are. Beautiful. Now this is what you have to do to just move to the next stage. This is what you have to do to move to the one after that. So um, anyway, the, the five stages. So the first is, this is like a setup stage. And I saw this with every single participant, me included. If you imagine four legs of a table, the four legs being physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. What I saw with every single participant was a real heavy lean on the physical and the mental and really neglecting the emotional and the spiritual. So what does this look like? This looks like we're really good at thinking and doing and not as good at feeling and being. Mm -hmm. And, and the, this does not mean that if you're busy, you're going to be betrayed. It just, what also happens with this is the feeling and being is where our intuition lies. And we turn this down when we're so busy thinking and doing. So imagine that table, you know, if you only have two legs sturdy, well, it's easy to topple over. That's, that's what I saw. That's the second level. This is the shock. Here's where you're blindsided and it's a shock to the body, the mind, the worldview. You're, you've ignited the stress response. You're headed for every single stress related symptom, illness, condition, disease, your mind, you cannot wrap your mind around what you just learned. It doesn't make the slightest bit of sense. And your, uh, and your worldview, how you view the world, this is how it works, this is safe, don't go here, is totally and utterly destroyed. But a new worldview hasn't been formed yet. So this is by far the scariest stage. When, you've, uh, when you're, you're, the shock sort of subsides a little bit, what starts to happen is you start thinking about survival. And that, that comes in pretty, pretty quickly. So, so that's stage three, survival instincts emerge. It's the most practical stage. If you can't help me get out of my way. How will I survive this experience? Where do I go? Who can I trust? Who can I speak to? 
Now, here's the thing though. This is the, sa- the stage that I see people get stuck in the most. Because once we've learned how to survive, we think that's as good as it gets. And then we live a lifetime there. And then we start making excuses for being there. Then we start receiving all of these benefits, small self benefits from being there. And then you know how the universe works. It's like, you know, you start uh, like energy attracts like energy. So now you're like attracting all of these situations to you that confirm, well, maybe I did deserve this. Maybe, 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 you know. And now we're planting some deep, firm roots in this place of nothing better than survival. If we're willing, willingness is a huge word here. If we're willing to do the work to move from stage three to four, which involves a grieving process so much more, we can move to stage four. This is finding and adjusting to a new normal. Here's where you realize, you know what? I cannot undo the betrayal. I can't do anything about it, but I'm moving forward. And this is like if you've ever moved to a new house, condo, office, apartment, whatever, your stuff isn't there. You know, it's not cozy yet, but it's going to be okay. When you're doing that mentally and emotionally, you're signaling the stress response. Okay, you know what? We, we don't have to destroy our body to the extent that we were. You're still not healing, but you're turning down how quickly you're creating illness and disease. You're making new rules. And also, this is interesting too. I saw this with everybody. When you're moving, you know, if you were to move from one space to another, you know how you wouldn't take everything with you, mm-hmm. right? You take the things you love. Right. And the things that you've outgrown that no longer serve, that don't represent the you that you want to be in this new space, you don't bring. And I saw that with friendships. Here's where in this stage four, if your friendship, if your friends weren't there for you, if they didn't, uh, if they couldn't support you the way you really needed, uh, you just didn't bring them along. And here's also where, let's say you used to gossip or judge, and that's what you did with your friends. You don't find that intolerable now. Mm-hmm. So all the rules are changing right here. Anyway, you settle into this space and it's becoming your own. It's becoming more comfortable. You're getting okay with this whole thing. And then you can move into the fifth most beautiful stage. And this is healing, rebirth, and a new worldview. Now you've turned down the stress response. Your body starts to heal. You also didn't have the bandwidth for self-love, self-care. It was like the last thing on your mind. Now you're like, huh, I deserve to eat better. I want to take myself for a walk. I want to nurture myself in some way. The mind starts to heal. You're making new rules, new boundaries, and you have a new worldview based on where you've been and the four legs of that table, right? The, the physical, the mental. Now we are solidly grounded because we're paying attention to the emotional and the spiritual too. Those are the five stages. Mm, awesome. Thank you. So like, what is this, the post-betrayal syndrome that you mentioned a little bit ago? What is that like in before stage one begins or what, where, where does that fall? Yeah, no, you know what? That's, that's the response and reaction to that betrayal. And it is this collection of, uh, you know, this, we've seen physical, mental, and emotional symptoms. So it's, it's so common. Now here's the thing. These symptoms can be there for 10, 20, 30, 40 plus years. And then we attribute it to aging. We attribute it to bad luck. We attribute it to just circumstances. It, this is because of the betrayal, you know? So, but the beauty is it can all be cleared up. You know, one of the other, uh, the other discovery was too, healing from betrayal is very different than healing from other life crises, death of a loved one, disease, natural disaster. You know, when you think about it, and I'm sure everybody watching, you've been through something else. Right? Like, like, let's say death of a loved one, like I lost, I lost my mom, or disease. I was in ICU for 11 days with a horrible, it's a miracle I'm alive. Mm. But, what, but there's such a different nature to betrayal because it feels so intentional. So we take it so personally. So the whole self has to be rebuilt. Rejection, abandonment, confidence, worthiness, trust, they all have to be rebuilt. So it needed its own name. So I coined a new term, post-betrayal transformation. And that's the state where you have done that complete healing plus rebuilding of the self. When you've done that, you've experienced post-betrayal transformation. And I don't know, you're, you're just pretty strong and empowered and confident and don't mess with you. That's awesome. So um, let's talk, let's like kind of link back to the narcissistic equation also. So, right, like one thing that that seems to be popping up a lot over, Mm -hmm. you know, in media these days is the the narcissist empath connection relationship, right? Like one one attracts the other and people watching right now might might have that experience. So Mm -hmm. could you share a little bit about why that why that is? Yeah, and you know it's interesting because that actually is a is a 
full chapter in my book that's coming out uh, in September and it, on the empath and the narcissist, the perfect storm. And it is because when you think about it, an empath is, and, and the way I describe an empath, because I am one and I'm a highly sensitive empath. So it's like empath on steroids. And it's almost like, I look at it like many people have sort of a layer of bubble wrap around them. And so things don't penetrate the same way. An empath has the sheerest, thinnest layer. Uh, and so things penetrate deeply. Mm. The beauty is they also see the unseen. They hear the unheard, you know. So there's such, a, uh, there's such an additional depth to, to just what they're able to understand and process and, and the intuitive abilities. So there are so many gifts there. But before you know you're an empath, you're like, why am I so overly sensitive? Why, you know, like I never understood. I'm like, why am I the only one running to get the lunch attendant when the bully's picking on the kid? Why am I the one ex escorting the bug outside and someone's just <laughs> swatting it? Like, why, why, why am I crying every single time I see a beautiful reunion uh, in an airport, you know? And, and, but when you understand it, you're like, oh, I get it. But because an empath gives to a fault, is the healer, wants to help, wants to, you know, and then here's the narcissist that it's all about them and they take. So the narcissist is looking for narcissistic supply. The empath with this wide open heart is giving, giving, giving. And it's, it is just, it, it, so then of course the empath gets exhausted because none of this makes sense. They're burning themselves out completely. The narcissist is looking at it as supply. You know, here's an easy reference. It's almost like I have six dogs. So I, I look at it like this. You know, it, like if a tick burrows itself onto a dog, that tick just is there latching on, sucking out all the blood that it can. That's kind of a, that's a narcissist, you know, and that's what that narcissist is doing. You know, but what, what, I would love everybody to truly understand is it's not your fault. And a lot of people say, well, then that's it. I'm just going to put this big wall up. No, you're, you have such a beautiful heart. It, it was just taken advantage of, but for you to close down, then the narcissist wins even more. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I've heard like, narcissists don't age well. Empaths do. <laughs> there you go. So like what suggestions do you have for people? So people watching right now are prob probably either in a current relationship where mm -hmm. with a narcissist or experiencing that kind of emotional abuse, or maybe they're, they've attracted many of those over the years and they're yeah. not in a relationship. So like what, what suggestions do you have for people on how to, um, I guess, navigate a current relationship or, mm -hmm. or attract a healthy one, you know, given that they are that empathic codependent, right. Kind of person. You know what I, I, I want to come up, uh, teach something a little bit different than a lot of your, the other guests will be doing. So, so I think I'm, I'm going to answer your question by teaching uh, a little concept. I call it the window of willingness. Okay. okay. And what this is, is if you can imagine a window, the widest open, right. It's open as wide as it can be. And I'm going to show you where the narcissist fits in here. The widest open. So someone, let's say, betrays you, right? But now let's say that person is like, oh my gosh, I am so sorry. I can't believe what I've done. That is so awful. I understand completely how you feel. What can I do to make it up to you? Now, of course, with betrayal, it's going to take more than that. But at least best case scenario, apology, remorse, restitution, ownership, right? You could feel the window, you have something to work with here. You could feel the window closing a little bit with this next level. And this is uh, excuses. And when you hear the word because, this is still not the narcissist yet. When you hear the word because, you know it's coming. Well, I did it because blah, 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 blah. Okay, you may still be willing to listen, but you notice how it just doesn't feel as good as the absolutely no excuse, just taking full and complete responsibility, right? Yeah. The window closes even more on this next one, and this is level three, and this is blame. And here's where you hear the word you. And here's where the narcissist comes in. Well, I did it because you did this. I did it because you, it's like, what? I call this the two-sided slap. So here you get betrayed or whatever, that's slap on one side, and now you're getting blamed for it. This is crazy making, and this is what a narcissist will do because they can't, they have no empathy. They can't take, or they're not willing to take responsibility for their own behaviors. So it's like dumping it on you like a hot potato, right? 
And we, when we try to work with that, here's where we, we get into trouble. But then it gets even worse. Level four. And this is where the window is sealed shut. This is where the person takes zero responsibility, no ownership. You know, usually what I see with a narcissist is it's a combination of three and four. They're either blaming you, taking no responsibility. You really have nothing to work with when that's the when you're at that point. So what you want to do, and that was the case with my family betrayal. When it's when that's where you are, you do all the work you can to heal and you move on. Mm -hmm. Because you to try to, you will exhaust yourself. And I know everybody, they, they're shaking their head. They've done this. You will exhaust yourself and make yourself sick trying to convince, persuade, prove. You know, it's like you want to walk around with a pad and paper proving, well, no, you said this. No, no, you did that. And it is a complete and utter waste of time. Mm -hmm. mm. So see where you are. I would say see where you are with that window. Because if you're at a level three, level four, the only thing I see happen time and time again is we make ourselves sick over trying to prove, convince, sway. In the meantime, all we're doing is believing, well, maybe I didn't say that. Maybe I did do that. Maybe I, and now what we're doing is we are just drilling ourselves into this space of negative beliefs that absolutely don't serve us. Um, it's not, it's not true. And we need to get our mind back, get our health back. Um, and it's also not the place for a relationship right then. So the person who says, okay, I get it. And now I just want a new relationship. No. You know how, like when there, someone's building a new website, there's like the under construction. Yes. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> needs to put like under construction. It is not the place, not the time. Because when you get to your best place, you resonate at such a different level and who shows up would blow your mind. Mm -hmm. But if you if you're only willing to do that because you have that hole in your heart, you just want it filled, you can only create and recreate more of the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is that's so key for you know. I, I, have, a, I have a friend who's been through you know a, a, some betrayals in in the past, and and yeah, like wanted to so easily we're just like dive right back into that relationship and get online and get and and just like one one relationship after the next, just not not healthy and and has you know. Yeah. So totally, totally, <laughs> totally get that, you know, in the world of, of waiting and, and giving it more time. So, um, going back to post betrayal transformation and how you talked mm -hmm. about that, like another kind of buzzword in, in like, I guess the personal development psych psychology world is post-traumatic growth. Mm -hmm. So what, what would you say is the difference between those? Yeah. And, and, you know, originally when I did the study, I was studying because I like the upside of, of trauma. Betrayal is such a heavy, dark topic. So I was like, okay, well, what, what could the upside be here? Because betrayal stinks and it hurts. And I've been there. <laughs> so I was studying betrayal and post-traumatic growth. And what I found was you know, post-traumatic growth is like the upside of trauma, how, how, that, how it left you with a new perspective, awareness, uh, insight that you didn't have beforehand, you know, and things you've learned, things you've realized. And that's why when I was studying post-traumatic growth, I was like, but betrayal is different. Because yes, you, you know, you have this new awareness, this new insight, but when you, let's take losing someone you love, you, you, you don't question the love. You don't question your sanity. You don't question yourself. You're sad. You grieve. Your life changes because of their loss. But betrayal has you not only recreate and, and, and redesign your life, it causes you to rebuild the self. So, so it was post-traumatic growth plus rebuilding the self equals post-betrayal transformation. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Mm, I love it. So like, how does one know when they've healed from, yeah. from betrayal? How do they know they've reached, they've gone through their five steps? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, it's an interesting process because first of all, you will feel, it's like things it's your highest self is speaking to you, you know, and, and it's almost like smaller things. You're like, Oh really darling, you're going to let that bother you. Look what you did, <laughs> you know? So there's that element of that. You just, there's this confidence. There's this um, ability to see things from so many different perspectives. You know, one of the things I noticed too was from that space, like in this stage five, there was also two sides of a coin with so many different things. Like there was this fearlessness, but they were still terrified. There's this, um, uh, you know, wanting revenge, but 
not doing it because it's not in anyone's best interest and coming from a place of compassion instead. There was the, um, like whatever it was, there was such a depth and a texture to, to who that person had become because they slayed those dragons. I mean, it's, it's brutal. And, and it's interesting too, because there were three groups in my study who did not heal. And, and I, listen, I assumed, I was like, wow, you know what? The person who was the hardest hit wouldn't grow so much because they had way too much to overcome. That had nothing to do with it, nothing. It was the person who was numbing, avoiding, distracting. It may have made the day a little bit easier, mm -hmm. but the ones who were like, no, 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 I am, I'm gonna deal with this and I'm gonna come out the other side and I have no idea what to expect, but I'm gonna recreate my life. And, and one of the biggest elements with this too is there's this death and rebirth. And it could be death and rebirth of yourself. Your old identity does not exist anymore. It could be death and rebirth of a relationship. You know, and that's what happened with my husband. You know, as two completely different people, not long ago, we, we married each other again. Oh. You know, new rings, new vows, new everything. And the I did not our, know that. And the kids is our bridal party. And, and I never would have, that's the hardest thing by far I have ever done. So. Um, I never would have done that had he not changed so radically and, and me not changed so radically. And the truth is there's nothing of the old relationship, except that we happen to have four kids together, you know, <laughs> and that's what's so, but, but what I see is when people are afraid of that, that end, you can't birth something new unless it ends. And all I see is, and that, and I'll tell you, there was, the group that didn't heal, who was also the sickest. This is when the betrayer had no consequences. So whether it was because of financial reasons, fear, religion, not wanting to break up a family, whatever, they tried to overlook it. They tried to look, you know, turn the, the other cheek. They tried to just get over it. Tell that to your broken heart, it doesn't work. And all that would happen was they would get sick. The relationship just deteriorated further and it didn't work, but there's, and I get it. It's terrifying just to say, this relationship is over without knowing what'll show up. When, when, when my second betrayal happened, you know, the one with my husband, it was over. And I had no idea. So, okay, okay, let me see what it's like doing this on my own, being a single mom. I have no idea what's going to show up. But only because it was true, death of that relationship, um, did we even have this opportunity. Uh, for this this new version to emerge, but not everybody is willing. Not, the opportunity doesn't always present itself. Like with my family betrayal, it wasn't even an option. Right. But here it was. So so many different scenarios. But it is. It takes that death in order for that rebirth. Mm -hmm. So like I was. This actually is a great segue into trust and learning to trust again. So like in your experience of whether whether you had remarried your your previous husband again mm -hmm. or you had gone on to a new relationship mm -hmm. how how did you how did you learn to trust again and and be able to cultivate a healthy relationship yeah you know it's so great you say that trust again is the name of my book ah, um, there you go <laughs> there there you have it so uh i'm going to give you I, i'm really big on analogies so one analogy that that this represents trust i look at trust as a brick wall and that brick wall is, is created brick by brick by brick, right? The only way it can be created, brick that I know of, brick by brick by brick. And what that represents is that person, these two people, right, are showing each other, you could trust me, here's an example, and then another opportunity comes, you could trust me, here's another example. And it's over time, consistently, right? And then what happens is betrayal happens and it completely shatters and destroys that brick wall. It's gone, it's totally, you know, destroyed. I don't believe in repairing. It cannot be repaired, but I do believe in rebuilding. So in this example, how does that wall get built again? Same way, brick by brick by brick. Now, the person who's been betrayed has to be willing to allow for that brick wall to be rebuilt. They have every right to say, you know what? I don't have the, I just don't have it in me. You can build it if you like. I'm not interested. Perfectly okay, but it's the job of the betrayer to be the most amazing bricklayer possible. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that, and, and it's again, it's the choice of the betrayer too. They can say, this is too much work, I don't wanna do it. But if they decide 
it's worth it and it's the least I can do after the pain I've caused, well then they have to just show time and time again, they can be trusted. And maybe it's where like the betrayed uh, has a trigger and now they're, they're, that trigger is so painful. So they reach out and they're, they're you know, wondering where are they? And then sure enough, the betrayed is exactly where they said they were. They were. Mm-hmm. That's a brick. Mm-hmm. Or it could be something comes up and then the betrayed is thinking, oh, here we go. They're going to be defensive and whatever. And they're, they're met with just love and kindness. That's a brick. Mm-hmm. So it really is rebuilding a completely new, stronger, better brick wall. Mm. That's beautiful. Yay. I'm so happy for you. (laughs) (laughs) But it takes a lot of work and it cannot be rushed. Like, think about it. You can't get that brick wall up in a day. You know, it Mm -hmm. takes time. So it it takes time. It takes willingness. Uh, It takes a ton of work. And I think what I see with so many people, even if there's a person willing to watch the brick wall get built and a very willing bricklayer, um, it's exhausting. And so many people say, you know what, it's fine. It's just not worth it. And that is perfectly legit. They have every right to believe that too. What I have found though is um, it will be a completely different brick wall. Mm -hmm. And, um, and what if it was for, what if it was in your best interest in some way? Like, you know, I'll never forget because betrayal destroys trust in yourself trust in your betrayer. So you trust kind of the universe, right? I mean, that's one of the elements of it. And I remember seeing someone who, uh, an intuitive coach, and I'm like, okay, well, she's got this universe on speed dial. I need some help here. And she laughed. She said, oh my gosh, how you two plan this. What? Just You were in such cahoots right here. You needed something so catastrophic to crash and burn. You are going to be teaching about betrayal. You're going to have this big institute that's following books, all kinds of stuff. He is going to become the husband, man, father that he's supposed to be. It's going to be the greatest thing that ever happened to you. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> right. At the time, you're like, uh-uh. <laughs> and and it's, it's bizarre, not bizarre, you know, but it's amazing how every single thing she said happened. But when you're going through it, mm. <laughs> you're, not, you're not thinking that at all. Right. Oh, yeah. that's, that's an awesome story. And, and there it is. Thank you so much for sharing that. That, that was like a, such a surprise. And we've talked <laughs> a few times. So uh, has seeing that all come together like that, that's beautiful. And in your new book coming out, that's, that's awesome. Trust again. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Trust so um, why don't you tell people how they can take this quiz? So there's a, a button below this video, everyone that you can click on to go over to Debbie's site. So tell us about that. Oh, the quiz, I just start there. And you know what? And what I hear from so many people is, wow, the quiz was really, it was a little jarring and that's good. You can't change what you're not aware of. So the whole idea is you're going to be confronted with, I'm going to be asking you about symptoms that you're working on, that you're struggling with, or things that you may not have even noticed, but they're tied to betrayal. So you'll see, wow, you know what? I'm, I'm hesitant to have relationships again. I'm not confident. I'm, I'm feeling this. It's all tied to your betrayal. So it's just pbtinstitute.com forward slash quiz. Take the quiz. Mm. <laughs> just take it. Awesome. Take Thank it. you, everyone. Again, there's that button below. You can click right th- through and go take that quiz. So any last insights? Anything else you feel like we've, we've left out? Uh, you know, I, I just, I just want to let everybody know I know how much it hurts. It, it, there are days where getting out of bed is, is all you can do. And be gentle on yourself. Be kind with yourself. But you deserve to heal. You, know, you, you can't undo the betrayal, but you can control how long it affects your health, your relationships, your work, your life. And I'm not just saying that from my own experience. I did the study on it. So it's real. You can heal from all of it. Mm, beautiful thank you thank you for doing this debbie it's been so great to reconnect thank you for having me yeah and thank you everyone who's showing up right now who's watching who's listening who's who's loving themselves enough to be here and 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 take in this information and willing to go on this journey thank you so much for tuning in and being with us and we'll see you again real soon take care everybody Mm -hmm.